We return now to our ongoing coverage of America's criminal justice system. Tonight, we explore what's called gate money, the small sums that some states give to people on the day they walk out of prison. Advocates argue this money is often too little to help people during those crucial first days and to keep them from falling back into a life of crime. William Brangham is back now with a look at a California initiative to dramatically increase this assistance. It's part of our series, Searching for Justice. I wake up in my bed some mornings and I look around like, where am I at? I'm like, oh God. Well, you can't believe that you're out. I can't believe I'm out. 28-year-old Ton Tran was released from San Quentin prison in May after more than a decade behind bars for armed robbery. He was raised in foster care and says he first joined a gang at age 12, looking for some semblance of a family. He's been locked up on and off for most of his life. Like, I have more memories in prison than on the outside. When he got out, he was handed what's called gate money. He, like all returning citizens in California, got the same amount, $200. Here's 200 bucks on a prepaid card. Good luck, buddy. Don't come back. And that 200 bucks, what that paid for was a meal at Jack in the Box for me and my partner and $80 worth of gas because we know how much gas costs nowadays in California. And then at the end of that, I was like, well, I got about 60, 70 bucks left to try to figure out my life for the first time ever. So this was Christmas 2012. Tran was fortunate because his sister, Tuvo, let him move in with her and her wife, and she helped him get his IDs and a used car. And even with the support I had, I struggled. I struggled so much that even at this point, like you see me in this house right now, but I'm moving tomorrow. I have to check into a transitional house because I can't afford rent. And this is with the support I had. Now imagine all the people who don't have that support. Right, you're kind of one of the lucky ones. Right, I'm extremely lucky, and yet I'm, I'm struggling. And it's like, these are the two options we're leaving people. You can be lucky and struggle when you get out, or you can be unlucky and go back to prison. The amount of gate money given out varies by state. Colorado gives $100. Alabama gives 10 California's $200 is the most in the nation. That $200 was the same amount in 1973. So you're asking someone in 2022 to use $1973 to live in a 2022 age with 2022 expenses. California State Senator Democrat Sidney Comlogger passed a bill this year to raise California's gate money to nearly $2,600. That's the average monthly cost of living in California, according to MIT's living wage calculator. But in legislative negotiations, that money was cut in half to $1,300. If signed into law, Comlogger's office says it would cost the state about $42 million a year. What would you say to someone who <clears throat> thinks $1,300 is a lot of money and these people may have done awful things that got them landed in prison in the first place and I'm uncomfortable with the idea of giving them that much money? I think if you are asking folks to do their part, to rehabilitate, to re-enter society, to be successful, and then you give them no financial support, even for a month, even for a month. Is it really their fault alone that they end up back in prison? About two thirds of the more than 600,000 people released from prison every year are rearrested within three years. We invest billions of dollars to build jails, and build prisons, and incarcerate people. We don't take, make the same investments to make sure that when people finish their time, that they have a fighting chance to reintegrate into society and to build a new life. Stanley Richards was once incarcerated, but later rose to a leadership role in New York City's Department of Corrections. He now works at a group that helps returning citizens. He says increasing gate money won't solve all their problems, but he says even if it helps some, it makes economic sense. So in New York City, it costs us about $500,000 uh, to incarcerate a person for a year. And it's our tax dollars that pay for that. Imagine if we took a fraction of that to invest in reentry. We could fundamentally change who goes in, how many people go in, and significantly reduce that number. 
47-year-old Alan McIntosh was one of those people who cycled in and out of prison. He's been out just a few months now after serving 24 years for a weapons charge. He says this last conviction came after he was released back in the 1990s, given $200, but little else. He bought a bus ticket. I can remember buying a pair of shoes because I had flip-flops on from a guy that was at the bus station. That cost me like $30. So now I got $140 to live on with no direction. He says he soon fell back on old habits and got convicted on a gun charge. From the moment you get out, you're already scrapping with $200. So you're not thinking, your mind is not focused on doing the things that you need to do. That's what I was about to say. That looks like Savannah. Now, out for a second time, he's married to his high school sweetheart, Davina, and he's found a new source of support, an organization known as CEO, the Center for Employment Opportunities. It gives people coming out of prison three payments, totaling about $2,700, and expects them to hit certain goals, like drafting a resume or finding a job. McIntosh, who is now the property manager at this Oakland housing complex, says his first assistance check was for $750. The first $750 I spent on a wardrobe because I have a job now, so I got to look presentable. So that $750 I put towards getting clothes. Including what you're wearing right now? Including what I'm wearing now. This was one of the first outfits I bought. Nice. <laughs> Looks good. Thank you. Sam Schaefer is the head of CEO. They work with about 8,000 returning citizens each year in 12 different states. They've provided this assistance to over 10,000 people. Those three payments are meant to be that booster that helps someone in those really difficult first three months when they're coming home. Those three months where they'll probably face some of the steepest barriers to reentry, it gives them an ability to get back on their feet and support themselves and their family. It's the only home I've ever had. So it's like, damn. It's moving day for Tom Tran. <sighs> Even though he also got help from CEO, rent is still expensive. So he's moving out of his sister's place in Sacramento to a transitional house that's closer to his job at a nonprofit in Oakland. Tran's two sisters and little nephew yeah. came to help. And then your room's gonna be back here. Yeah. Totally brand new kitchen. Rashid Stanley Lockhart served 18 years for armed robbery and was released in 2020. Nice. He's now a director at the Ahimsa Collective, a group which owns several houses like this and helps people oh, like Tron re-enter society. How do we try to prevent crimes or recidivism from happening? And that's by helping people heal. Hurt people hurt people. So why take somebody who's hurt and put them in a hurt environment as opposed to helping them heal so that this doesn't happen again? People coming out, they need some training wheels. They, they need someone to help kind of guide them through before they can start pedaling on their own. Uh, you don't just throw a little kid on a bike and say, go for it. You know, so I, I feel like it's essentially the same thing. For now, California's gate money is still set at what it was 50 years ago. The legislation to raise it is on Governor Gavin Newsom's desk. All right, y'all drive safe. I'm going to slide back inside. All right, love you, brother. In the meantime, people like Ton Tran will rely on the support of nonprofits and their families as they try to start their lives over again. All right, y'all drive safe. All right. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm William Brangham in Northern California.